Adapting to a low-carb, ketogenic diet provides a wide variety of benefits that can have huge impacts on people from all walks of life. From dealing with certain metabolic diseases, to improving athletic performance, even to improving brain function, we could definitely all use the boost that ketosis provides. And while I have covered a lot of these benefits in this video series, I think it's also important to cover with just as much detail some of the skepticism of a ketogenic diet. I've been fortunate enough to have some awesome questions and concerns voiced in the comments of previous videos, and it seems that the idea that a ketogenic diet might put cholesterol levels at risk is a widespread concern. So let's talk about cholesterol. The idea that the increased consumption of fat in a ketogenic diet could result in health troubles, and in particular cardiovascular troubles, is misguided on a few levels. Let me start by clarifying a pretty common misconception. Serum cholesterol, or the amount of cholesterol measured in the blood, is not directly correlated in any way to dietary intake of cholesterol. And in fact, the body creates much larger amounts of cholesterol than you can ingest nutritionally. After years of nutritional guidelines recommending that dietary cholesterol be avoided as much as possible, we're seeing the shift in the understanding that not only is it unnecessary to closely regulate dietary cholesterol levels, but cholesterol plays a crucial role in keeping you healthy. The American Journal of Clinical Nutrition has recently reported, at present, there is no clear relation of saturated fatty acid intake to these outcomes, being obesity, cardiovascular disease, and the incidence of cancer and osteoporosis. In fact, the role of cholesterol in the body includes, but is not limited to, aiding in the production of key hormones, helping the liver create bile which aids in digestion, and providing a protective barrier for each and every cell in our body. Even low-density lipoproteins, or LDL, which most people consider to be bad cholesterol, play a crucial role in delivering cholesterol to cells throughout the body. The real issues come from oxidative stress and inflammation affecting pre-existing levels of cholesterol by oxidizing LDL, which studies have shown correlate directly to excess dietary intake of carbohydrates and elevated blood sugar, rather than nutritional intake of fats and dietary cholesterol. The main issue presented by the oxidation of LDL is that the immune system can mistake it for bacteria. The attempt to fight it off causes inflammation inside the arterial walls, promoting atherosclerosis, heart disease, and other complications many people mistakenly attribute to high cholesterol. Meaning that we should be putting much more importance on lowering the rate at which LDL is oxidized, rather than the level of LDL and cholesterol present in the blood. Trying to improve serum cholesterol levels by reducing dietary intake of cholesterol is a little like trying to put out a fire by tending only to the smoke. As far as the direct effect of a ketogenic diet on cholesterol levels, it's been discovered that ketones can act as epigenetic modulators, effectively increasing gene expression which can improve cell function and protect the body from oxidative stress. This means that the production of ketones allows the natural genes that code for necessary functions to express themselves and better run the code for these functions, rather than being suppressed by the resulting factors of constant carbohydrate intake. One of the first genes affected in a ketogenic metabolism is HMGCS2, which is a gene that regulates hydroxymethylglutaryl coenzyme A synthase, or HMG CoA synthase which in turn promotes mitochondria to more easily and more readily use ketones as fuel and also regulates levels of serum cholesterol. In a nutshell, research is now showing that low-carb ketogenic diets, raise serum high-density lipoproteins or HDL, improve the ratio of HDL to LDL, and increase the size of LDL, all of which are proven to be beneficial to cardiovascular and overall health. Lastly, in an attempt to get ahead of anyone claiming that a ketogenic diet may have affected their cholesterol levels negatively, here's a quick explanation as to why that may have been the case and how it's only momentary. Stephen Finney, a leading researcher in the field of low-carb nutrition, discovered an interesting phenomenon when monitoring the cholesterol levels of individuals using a ketogenic diet for weight loss. Along with the often talked about serum cholesterol, we store cholesterol along with triglycerides in fat cells. When we adapt to ketosis and begin to use fat for fuel, we mobilize the triglycerides and cholesterol in fat cells, but are only able to metabolize the triglycerides. This is why in extreme weight loss cases, primarily weight loss over 60 pounds, cholesterol levels, and in particular LDL levels, can become elevated. 
although only for a short period, because quickly these cholesterol levels drop to lower than ever after being cleared out by the process of being picked up by the liver, made into bile, and cleared through the gallbladder, once again creating a change in cholesterol levels that correspond with major health improvements. I hope this was able to answer to what I've seen is one of the main skepticisms of a ketogenic diet. And as always, I'd love to hear from you guys, comments, concerns, questions, and I'll do my best to continue to answer to everyone who leaves a comment. I'm also going to try to get out another video pretty quick here, so be on the lookout for that. But until next time, keep going against the grain.